Would you turn to the book of Mark? Gospel of Mark, please. Mark 16. <clears throat> yes. Mark 16 and verse 16. Is everybody all right? Everybody cool? Yeah. I mean, you're not hot? Okay. In verse 16, is everybody there? Let's read it together. He who what? Believes. What's the word believe mean? Follow. To follow. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. Amen? They're going to follow. And he says that in my name they will what? Cast out devils. In other words, they will remove evil. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. In other words, enforcers. Everyone say, I'm an enforcer. To remove evil. That's what a warrior is. How many of you know God is looking for worthy warriors? Everyone say, worthy warrior. Worthy warrior. I want to be a worthy Warrior, Romans 8. Worthy warriors. Romans 8, 18. <clears throat> Let's speak it. Is everybody there? For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. <laughs> For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons and daughters of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. In other words, that's the final part. We're waiting for a glorified body. That's the next thing. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if I hope for what I do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Everyone say perseverance. How many of you all know perseverance is called endurance? And endurance is also known as patience. Perseverance, endurance, and patience, they all connect. Verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also what? Helps in our weaknesses. What's the greatest weakness? Prayer. That's the greatest weakness. For the Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. People's greatest weakness is maintaining a consistent prayer life. They go to the woe is me and what's for me. Your prayer life be, should be a prayer of intercession of warfare. Does everybody get that? It should be warfare. That should be your prayer life, not what you need. God already knows what you need. He says, seek ye the kingdom of God and all things will be added to you, right? Okay. The Lord is my shepherd, I won't what? I won't lack a thing. If he's your shepherd, if he's not your shepherd, you're always praying for something you need. 
Let's get real. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should what? Pray. For as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered or what it means is understood. Because you pray in tongues, you don't understand what you're praying. Amen? What does it say? Makes intercession. Not only does he make intercession for us, but for others. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for who? The saints according to the what? Will of God. So you know when you're praying in tongues, you're praying God's perfect will. So does the enemy want you to pray in tongues? Heck no. Can you imagine if everybody prayed in tongues? Of course, many people believe it's not, I don't know who it's for. It's for you, dummy. It's for everyone. It is a gift of God. He doesn't tell one person, you can have it, and another person, no, 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 you can't have that. That's that religious poop. Verse 28. And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are, who are the what? Called according to his purpose. The word called says... Battle. Everyone say, I'm called, called. to battle. battle. My purpose, purpose is to destroy, destroy. Satan's kingdom. Satan. My destiny, destiny is to infiltrate Satan. the world system to rescue the lost. That is your life. That's your life as a believer. If it's not your life, then you ain't a believer. And if it isn't your life and you want to be a believer, you need to turn it around. Because time's running out. We're about to see something happen phenomenally. And we got to be placed in position to be able to fight. It's around the corner. Hallelujah. Verse 29. Is everybody there? Let's read it. For whom he what? For knew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Just because you've been predestined doesn't mean you're going to make it. Everybody got it? There's a lot of people who got this religious thought, well, if I've been predestined, what do I need to do? You need to cooperate to fulfill it. Because if you're not going to cooperate, that, that predestined plan for you will not be fulfilled. Amen? You want to catch bus 29, you're not going to wait at home for it to come to you. Amen. You'd be catching your thumb. It's called hitchhike. Verse 30. <clears throat> Moreover, whom he what? Predestined. Predestined. These he also what? What's called mean? What are you called for? battle. More of whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Glory in us. Freedom as children of God, conformed by cooperations so that we can be transformed into his image and likeness. As his sons and daughters we have been called, we have been justified, and we have been glorified for his purpose and not our own. Amen? 2 Timothy 2. To become a what? Worthy warrior. A worthy warrior, someone that's consistent. A worthy warrior endures. A worthy warrior doesn't quit. A worthy warrior doesn't live for himself. He looks out for the interests of others, not himself first. Not a busybody. Hello. There's a difference between looking out for interests in others and being a busybody. Hello. 
2 Timothy 2. In verse 1. Let's speak it. You therefore, my sons and daughters, be strong in the what? Grace. What's God's grace? It's His plan. Amen? It's not unmerited favor. We need to get this right. God's grace is not unmerited favor. It's unmerited love. You earn His favor. Hello? You earn trust. You're not going to give your keys to someone that can only ride a bicycle. You're going to give them your keys to your car. There better be training wheels on that car. You therefore, my son and daughters, be strong in the plan of God that is in Christ Jesus. What's his plan? You are called to what? Battle. Your purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. And your destiny is to infiltrate the world system and rescue those who are lost. That is your life. I think some of you are all surprised. Really? That's my life? That's your life now. You accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You don't have a life. It's amazing how many people accept Jesus and still fight for their life. And then they wonder why all kinds of stuff happens. You're, Jesus is not going to walk in your life. You're going to walk in his life. That's it. And until you're willing to take off the old man, the new man ain't coming. Hello? Oh, I want the new. I want the new. Well, get rid of the old. You can't put new wine in an old wineskin. Just don't work. Is everybody okay? Verse 2, and the things that you have, what? Heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to what? Faithful or worthy men or women who will be able to what? Teach others how to what? Fight. This is not some religious thing. It's teaching people how to fight. How to be kingdom minded. It's not just about teaching someone how to prosper. Listen, God wants to get you everything. But you got it spiritually positioned. He wants his character to be formed. He wants you to learn how to battle. He wants you to hate evil. He doesn't want you to pet it, compromise, or complacent. Amen? Amen. Ooh, verse 3. You therefore must what? Endure hardship. Endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You know what one of the hardships is? Letting go. I, I can tell you that after my transfiguration in Christ Jesus, as I became a new creation, I had to say goodbye to mom, dad, see ya. Thank you for bringing me into this room, but you're no longer my parents. He's my parent. See, if that's not happened yet, then you've got a little ways to go yet. If there's still dependence on pleasing mommy and daddy, you're pleasing the wrong people. Does everybody get it? Please him. See, then there's really not a relationship. It's a hope, but it's not a reality. A reality comes when you say bye to everything. That's the reality. And you step into another realm. It's like getting on a boat and saying bye. See you when I get home. Hopefully you make it. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Verse 4, let's speak it. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Hello. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. How many of y'all know that when you please God, everything else falls into place? 
He even makes your enemies at peace with you. Verse 5. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. So there are rules that God has placed. It's, it's integrity. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say. May the Lord give you what? Understanding and what? All things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. If we what? Died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. Oh, how glorious. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remember them of those things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to a ruin of the hearers. Be what? Diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. But what? Shun, profane, and idle gossip. For they will increase to more on godliness oh yes be strong in the plan of god because we are be strong in your calling in other words be strong in battle be strong in battle a person that is not in battle will become, the only reason why people backslide is because they stop they're not in battle Amen. bottom line that's why they backslide because they don't battle. They get weak in prayer. That's what the enemy wants. They skip prayer. They compromise in prayer. They become complacent and lazy. They don't fight. They don't buy and lose. Call down fire. They're always like asking for something for them. Amen. And it's usually materialism. God is not the God of materialism. He's the God of power. Amen. He's the God of truth. He's the God of love. Everything will fall into place if you fall into place with him's divine order. Amen? Amen? Ephesians 4. We want to be known as worthy warriors. You know, one of the things that I, I sense all the time in the arena of um, in the arena of training that people have this um, seed that says, well, once I get done with this, I can get back to my life. Once I learn this, I can get back to my life. Forget it. Because if that is your thought, everything that God has given you will be stolen from you. You'll actually walk away from God. I can't wait till I can get back to my life. Well, I thought you didn't have one. See, this is how the enemy plays. And God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge or understanding of these things. Oh, I want to have a life. I want a wife. I want a husband. I want children. I want houses. I want this. I want that. You'll lose it all. Because if you've been called by God, you can't escape it. You'll be miserable without fulfilling the mission. Amen. And the enemy will eat you up until you finally begin to fulfill it. But I want to get back with my life. You gave it up. Amen. He bought you now. Has everybody got it? He bought you. He died for me and you on that cross. He bought your life. Pulls us out of darkness. Set us in the glorious love of the kingdom of God. 
so that we can fight and rescue others. Why? Because this life in this realm don't mean stink. It's the eternal place that means something. And if the other place, if eternal hasn't come a reality to you, then you're still living for yourself here. And you're fighting for you. And you're not fighting for the life of Christ in this realm because you really haven't given up. And it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. And everybody else suffers while you're going through it. <laughs> Glory! So don't worry about it. Everybody suffering helps someone else to get trained. That's that thought that comes on. I'm struggling. <laughs> struggling so badly. And then you go tell somebody, man, I'm struggling. So am I. <laughs> Everybody's struggling. They're trying to die. So listen, you're struggling. Ain't nothing different than everybody else's struggle. In fact, most of the time you're struggling because you want to be more clothed with the glory of God and you just don't understand it yet. So you're looking for fulfillment. What can I do? I got to do the thing. I got to do something. I need to read the word more. I need to praise more. I need to do this more. I need to, you need to just die. What's going to happen after this? What's going to happen? What am I going to be like? We're going to be in a year from now. Who cares? A year from now ain't on your table. Today is today. Tomorrow's not promised. What are you trying to figure out tomorrow for? I don't even try and figure out my next meal. You can ask my wife that. She tries to ask me in the morning, what do you want for dinner? What? I don't plan nothing. I'm not an easy person to live with, I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> Glory. Glory Ephesians 4 verse 1 would you read it with me please I therefore the what the prisoner of the Lord oh my goodness some people don't even want to say that Believe me, if you're a prisoner of the Lord, you're in the greatest protection that there is. No evil shall befall you. I, therefore, a prisoner of the Lord. Paul was expressing this because he said, you know what? I'm his prisoner, and I love it. I beseech you to walk what? Worthy. worthy. In other words, to walk worthy of your what? Calling. In other words, to make your battle Worthy. Make your fight worthy. That you may that the Lord may can look at you and say, That's a worthy warrior. Look at that fight. Now there's a time to fight and a time to rest. Because not every battle is yours. You'll find that majority of them are the Lord's. But you must do your part. You battle every morning. And if you battle, what you sow is what you reap. So if you battle every morning, guess who battles the rest of the day for you? Hello. So what you, if you battle every single morning, the rest of the day you can just have fellowship. Does everybody get that? Then you just, you know, go on God's playground. You just go out and have fun with the Lord. He makes way. Things happen. 
Huh? You know, after I had gotten saved, and uh, I, I saw so many things manifest in my life. It was just, and it was like God was making himself so real and more and more and more. I'm like, man, if you did this with everybody, everybody would believe. Horses talking to me, all kinds of stuff going on. <laughs> Laying hands on cars and getting healed. I mean, all kinds of powerful things. I was driving home one day. Well, yeah, the, one of the first missions God sent me on. I didn't, well, actually, I was coming home from a prayer meeting. And I was coming out of the parking lot. And somebody said to me, man, your tag is expired. I said, really? Snap. I need insurance then. I just got my car out of hock, so. I was driving a 46 Chrysler limo, so it wasn't big white wall tires. So it was something that you just couldn't blend in anywhere. It stuck out like a sore thumb, you know. So I thought, gosh. And it just happened I was driving home that day, and the police were checking right up here on Worst Road. And I said, Lord, there's just, it's impossible. No way. You got to hide me. You got to hide me. Or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to jail and I'm on probation. And I just got my license back. So I drive up there and as soon as I got up there, all the police like turned their heads. And they, were, they weren't looking at me no more. <laughs> Stepped on the gas a little bit further and went through. I went home, I opened my mailbox, and there was a card in there about insurance. And it was like 100 bucks off. I said, well, praise God. And the Lord was like, yes, guy. So I took this insurance card, and I went down next to the DMV and went into the insurance. And before I walked into the insurance place, the Lord says, I want you to tell the insurance man what happened to you and when I came to visit you. And I said, okay. And I went to go open the door and this place was filled with people. And I said, I'm not even going to ask, I said. I got in there, I opened the door, I sat down, two minutes, the <laughs> place was empty. I sat down in front of the insurance guy. Man, he was signing me up, knocking the 100 bucks off, all of this other stuff. And the Lord said, well. So I said, listen, I got to tell you something. So there's more than this than just me coming here. And I said, you know, you know, a few days ago, I had a visitation from the Lord, and I got to tell you what's up. And about Jesus and how much he loves you, this, that, and whatever. Of course, the guy thought I was crazy, looked at me strange, but. You know, I, I did what I was to do, and I, I left with insurance, went next door, got my updated tag, and I was driving home. And, and at the time, at the corner of this back road, which was actually on McGuire, uh, there wasn't so many buildings. There was horses there. And as I was driving there, uh, the Lord says, Look how beautiful my horses are. I said, yes, Lord, they're beautiful. I'm thinking, what the heck do you want me to look at these horses for? Okay, I'll look at them. Yes, they're beautiful, Lord. And, and so I turned left, and there's this fence, this wire fence, and the horses are all over there. And he says, look how beautiful my horses are. And I looked, and I said, Lord, they are beautiful. And one takes off, and I'm behind these cars. And, and this once, and, and he's going, do you, do you really see how beautiful? I said, yes, Lord, how beautiful your horses are. And I'm coming up, and I'm, I'm coming to a red light, and I'm about four cars behind, and I got to slow up, and this one horse is taking off, man. He's getting closer and closer to the fence. And I'm thinking, man, this thing's going to jump the fence or something? And, and I'm driving, and I finally have to stop. And this horse comes right up to the fence, right to my window, and says, nice job, guy. <laughs> I'm thinking, Mr. Ed. <laughs> I'm thinking, whoa, Lord, wait a minute. This horse just spoke to me. And he said, nice job, guy. And the Lord says, you obeyed me. 
And I wanted you to know that I was pleased. And I wanted you to know that there isn't anything I can't do. Well, let me tell you, I said, well, why, why don't you do this with everyone? Come on, send dogs, send horses, send mice. Speak to your people. <laughs> Whatever you got to do. They would believe. Come on, if you think about it, a horse comes to talk to you, you'd believe too. Didn't a horse talk to uh, Balaam? He rebuked him, didn't he? It was a donkey. Even a jackass can speak. You know. <laughs> Amen? Amen? So in this, the Lord brought such reality to me about there's nothing impossible and how much his love for us is just unconditional. So, of course, I said, what do you want me to do next? You know, I'm, I'm, hey, let's do some more of this. And it proceeded on, off and on, all kinds of things was going on. Because one of the things the Lord wants to do is make himself real to you. So he tries to get you set up and positioned to make himself real to you. And the more he makes himself real to you, the more he is real to you the more that this world begins to diminish and the more the unseen world becomes a reality. And next thing you know that there's angels all around you. Man, I used to take my dog for a walk and me and the angels would walk around at night. I'd have to open the door. They could walk right through the wall. I used to get a little frustrated on that. I said, man, that's unfair. But one day... We're going to walk through these walls together. But until then, see, everything I looked at, no matter what it was, I knew it was temporary. I'd be leaning on a tree saying, you temporary. I'd be sitting in the car, man, this seat's temporary. Hopefully it don't go now. <laughs> everything is temporary. But there's a place of eternal. And God wants to make eternal, so real to you and me that you don't fear death. You look forward to going home. See, because if you fear death, then there's still not that, there's still that not connection. Amen? If you're still wanting to get on with your life, then you're out of position. We don't have a life. And a faithful warrior doesn't have a life because they're faithful and they're worthy. God is looking for someone worthy to be called a warrior. Amen? Praise God. Is everybody okay? So we must be worthy of our call, which is worthy to battle. Prepare our purposes to what? Destroy Satan's kingdom and to infiltrate the world system and rescue those who've been taken captive. Amen? Praise God. 1 John chapter 3. Glory. In verse 1. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Let's speak it together. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know Him. Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not been been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. So that hope is saying, look at, man, when, when, I'm, when this is shed, I'm going to be like him. Glory. No pain. No goofy thoughts. Amen. Amen. No guilt, no condemnation, no sorrow, no... You can scuba dive with no gear. Play tennis on both sides at the same time. Drive fast cars without a ticket. You can think that anyways, you know. Chariots. I don't want a chariot. (laughs) 
This comes with a thousand horsepower. <laughs> Glory. Okay. Verse 3. And anyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to what? Take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Does everybody get that? He d they don't sin. It doesn't mean we don't make mistakes. But if you stay abided, the devil can't touch you. It's when you are not abiding. And the first thing he comes after you with is the prayer. Prayer. Prayer is a time of battle. It's not a time to get your needs met. Does everybody get it? If you battle first, he battles for you the rest of the day, then you have fellowship. Amen? You know, I, 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 used to, I used to take time in the morning. I mean, you know, when I was first saved, I, was, I, I used to spend almost four hours with the Lord a day. And, and, and that was my time to know. But then he kicked me out of the nest. He said, it's time, go. He said, battle. See, there's a time when it's just like an, an eagle or, that flies. The mother no longer comforts the nest anymore. In fact, it puts things in there that is uncomfortable and says, look, there goes your friends. It goes, poof, pushes them out. And then it goes, poof, and then, poof. yes. See, the first few flutters and then all of a sudden it starts cruising and then it begins to look for its enemy mm. you know what an eagle's enemy is that's its delicacy it loves to kill serpents snakes so that's what begins to happen and and, and as God begins to kick you out of the nest, it's not that he's removing you from his presence. He's, re, he's bringing you to another level so that you warfare. You warfare. Wasn't Jesus warfare? What was his, look at it. We didn't, we didn't even see all of his prayer life, did we? But he spent all night in the mountain. And then before he went to go hang on a cross, he went three times. He went to go pray, didn't he? He said, Father, if it's possible, let this will pass me by, but not my will yours. I mean, that's all we got of that. But let me tell you, he was warfaring. In fact, the word says that he sweat blood. His spirit was so strong that his body couldn't take it. He began to sweat blood. Because his body couldn't take the anointing and the battle that was going on within him. Because every demon in hell was around him trying to get him to wimp out. And he fought and he fought to where blood began to pour out of his body. Because he was a worthy warrior. Glory. Is everybody okay? Verse 6, whoever abides in him does not sin, and whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Verse 7, read it with me. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. Does everybody get that? Anyone that doesn't practice righteous is evil. Does somebody get this? Now listen. That's where good and evil are from the same tree. So there are people that are good, but they're not practicing righteousness. I know a lot of good people. 
They're good people. Sweet people. But they are not practicing righteousness. So if they're not practicing righteousness, they are not unplugged from the world and they are your enemy. They will eventually turn on you. He who sins is of the what? Devil. devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. Look at this. Are you ready? We are called to what? Battle. What's our purpose? Destroy Satan's kingdom. Look at this. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might what? Destroy the works of the devil. Are we supposed to continue that? That's your mission. In this, uh, whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Let me tell you, I haven't seen too many politicians practicing righteousness. I haven't seen... Any presidents practicing righteousness. I haven't seen too many in government practice righteousness. So if they're not practicing righteousness, they are evil. Does everybody understand that? Without your battle, evil would have taken over everything. The word tells us that the only thing that's restraining full-blown evil is the body of Christ being here. The problem is, is not everyone is doing their part. And in your prayer booklet, there is warfare prayer. God made it simple. Is everybody okay? So we're to be like him in what? Destroying the works of the devil. Destroying the works of the devil. Destroying the works of the devil. Not expanding the works of the devil which some believers do, but destroying the works of the devil. Matthew 10. Hallelujah. In verse 32. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's read it. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Wow, I haven't seen too many politicians or a president give glory to God. Does everybody get it? Do not think, come on, read 34 with me. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a what? Oh, snap. I come to bring a what? Sword, so that you and I could fight. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. How many of y'all want to be a worthy warrior? Then you need to cut loose mommy, daddy, sister, brother. Bam. I didn't say hate them. I said don't be dependent on them. Your dependency does come from above. Oh, mom, I need this. Oh, hush. Who is your source? Amen. Who's your source? God wants to be your source. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross, that cross is the sword. Does everybody got it? When you pull a cross out of the ground, what does it turn into? A sword. And he who does not take his sword and follow after me is not worthy of me. Why? Because if you don't fight, you can't follow. You'll be taken out of position. And he who, come on, are you ready for this next one? Are you ready? Come on, read it with me. And he who finds his life will lose it. Woohoo. 
And he who loses his life for my sake will find a new life. Does everybody got it? Are we cool? Do we have understanding? Thank you. Psalm 149. The word is piercing, isn't it? When we get understanding of what it really means. Psalm 149, verse 1. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song and his praise in the assembly of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name with a what? Let them praise his name with a what? That's why we dance. Amen? Let them sing praises to him with a timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. To what? Execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples. To bind their kings with chains, their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute on them the what? Written judgment. This honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. We are called to execute. Execute how? Warfare. Warfare. That mean, look, you're not going to go out around and cut heads off of people. You're going to cut heads off of serpents. Amen? You are not fighting physically. You are fighting spiritually. A physical battle cannot be won without it being won first spiritually. Romans 13. Verse 3. For the rulers are, are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good and you will have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you for good. Now, I want you to understand something. Because so many people take this in the arena of, yes, we are to submit to authority of government. Amen? But they are not God's ministers. Are they? We got an evil government. Amen. They promote same-sex marriage, abortion, and everything. You'll know them by their fruit. Amen. But we still have to submit under cer cer certain rules. Amen. And guidelines. Rules are made to protect people. But there's an area where there is an uh, where we don't agree with it, so we don't promote it. Amen. But so, it's amazing how many people, you know. They'll, they'll agree with it because it's government. And because the word says, well, you're to submit to a, a governing authority. Yeah, you're going to submit to a governing authority by, you know, not breaking laws of stealing, murder, and things to that degree and whatever. But there's that arena to where God is asking us to use discernment in the area to where we don't submit to their things that are against God. Amen. Because here it says, now there's a, there's a change here. So there's a, a ruling, a governing authority in the kingdom of God. Has everybody got that? There's a governing authority in the kingdom. For This is what he's talking about, God's ministers. He said, for he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is God's minister, an avenger to what? Execute wrath on him who practices evil. Does everybody get this? Therefore, you must be subject not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of these, you also pay taxes, for they are God's ministers, attending continue to this very thing. Remember, Jesus said something powerful. He said, give to Caesar what's due Caesar. Amen. The rest, keep. Now, there's an area where we pay taxes. Amen? Not that we agree with it all. But we give to Caesar what's due to Caesar. Amen? So, you and I have been given authority to execute judgment on evil. 
It doesn't mean on a person, but the spirits that are influencing the person. Amen? You and I have a, because we are not a battle of physical, we are battlers of the spirit. So we must look at things according to the spirit realm, not the physical realm. Amen? In the book of Jude. Jude 14. Let's speak it together now. Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his what? To do what? To execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Hello. Now there will be a time, because at this period of time, this place is going to be like the days of Noah. Satan's kingdom will be forced into the physical realm. People are going to see creatures that they've never seen before. There will be giants. There will be Nephilims. There are going to be all kinds of things. They will be ruling. There will be cannibalism. People have no idea about the great tribulation. All of Satan's kingdom will be brought in physical realm. People are going to be blown away when they see a half man and half animal. It says that their hearts will faint. They'll be so afraid. That at some point, because of their sting, they will want to die. And God will not allow them to die. Because that will be a part of their judgment. Ephesians 4. Fluffy religious stuff and get into the reality of what's really going on. We lay hands on the sick and cast out devils and pray for healing to remove spirits and evil things, darkness. Amen? We are enforcers of light, of righteousness, and of God's love. But we can't do that in our own strength. Look at the word says, work the works of God. What's the works of God? Destroy Satan's kingdom. That's the work of God. Destroying Satan's kingdom. That's what it's about. You and I were not rescued to get our life back. We were rescued to bring the life of Christ into this world. In verse 17, read it. This I say, therefore, testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not, so learn Christ. Because if you don't learn, you get burned. If indeed you have heard from him and been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off what? Concerning your former conduct of what? old man because you cannot put on the new man unless you put off the old man if you allow the old man to start coming on you can't put on the new man until you get him off again that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust but renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the what new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness do you all see that he said take off the old man before you put on the new man so there's a process of taking off the old man, isn't there? It's an everyday thing. Because the enemy doesn't want you to take off the old man. He's always trying to get you dressed with the old man. Because if you, can't, if you can't get rid of the old man, you can't put on a new one. Amen? People are trying to put on a new man and think they got the new man on, but they're still acting like the old man. Because they haven't taken him off. The new man is the only, the only one that can become a worthy warrior. 
2 Timothy 2. Oh, hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Is everybody there? Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Let's speak it. But in the great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and for some for dishonor. Listen, everyone in here is called. You have been chosen by God. It's a terrible thing to reject the call of God. Amen. You wouldn't be here and hearing this message and those watching and hearing wouldn't be if you hadn't been called by God. Amen. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, hello, take off the old man, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? Pure heart. Remember, get away. That's associations bring impartations. Amen? But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. In humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil having been taken captive to do his will to do his will i want to go to psalm 18 i'm going to skip some of this stuff We'll be here till tomorrow. Glory. Psalm 18. Verse 37. <clears throat> Is everybody there? Worthy warriors. I have what? Pursued my enemies and overtaken. Let me share something with you. So many people throw up a prayer and walk away. They don't pursue. You must pursue. What you see is not right. You pursue it until it's destroyed. Amen? I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn back again till they were destroyed. That means you're the battle every single morning battle every morning again if you're not in the battle you will become a casualty there's no doubt about it why because if you can't submit to God you cannot resist the devil it's impossible and the devil will try to always compromise it well you know it's, it's I mean come on really is that how didn't he do the same thing with Eve hey come on man you know don't you want to be like God well she already was does everybody get it? See, the devil was stealing her identity. She, she already knew what she needed to know. God was going to train her. I'd rather be trained by the Lord than by the devil. Hallelujah. <laughs> so he says, look it, I pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn back again till they were what? Till they were what? Till they were what? Destroyed. Destroyed. That means you're free from it. I have wounded them so that they could not rise. They have fallen under my feet. For you have armed me with strength for battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. You have also given me the necks of my enemies so that I destroyed those who hated me. They cried out, but there was none to save. Even to the Lord, but he did not answer them. Then I beat them as fine as the dust before the wind. I cast them out like dirt into the streets. That's what it do to demonic forces. 
Does everybody get it? That's why we are to be first strikers. Amen? Strike first. <laughs> Didn't Jesus go into the temple and drove out all of the money changers? What did he do? He made a whip. Yo, this is my father's house. See, this is the father's house. We're going to drive out everything. Made a whip. What was he removing? Worldliness. Amen? Listen, the Lord, when the Lord took the, the Jews out of Egypt and put them in the wilderness, it's so that Egypt could come out of the Jews. Unfortunately, many of them wouldn't let it happen, so he let them die. They never made it to the promised land. Glory. Oh, let's go to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. <clears throat> Verse 3. Matthew 24, verse 3. Let's speak it. Now, as Jesus said at the, on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately tell, saying, Tell us when these things will be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said, Take heed that no one what? Deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation. This is known as ethnic. We are seeing that happening big time in this country. And it's not promoted by the people. It's promoted right by the head of this country. Bigotry has started right from the head. We haven't seen this kind of bigotry in years. And as Christians, there should be none. It doesn't matter what nationality or what skin color, everything. None of that matters in the kingdom. We are all sons and daughters of the Most High. Amen? We haven't seen this much because this is showing that we are close. Close. For nation will rise against nation, that's ethnic, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. Is that happening? Yes. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation. So tribulation comes right after. So we, we're, we're, we're about done with beginning of sorrows. Tribulation is next. And they will kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. We're seeing that happening too. But he who endures to the end will be what? Saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. And I'm going to close at Luke 21. Only those who endure will be saved. Too many people are not enduring. They run. Luke 21 and verse 29. Worthy warrior. I speak it. Then he spoke to them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they are already budding, you see and know for yourselves that summer is now near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Surely I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Now I want you to grab hold of something. Fig tree means is associated with Israel. Israel became a nation in 1948. 
a generation is approximately 70 years. So everybody got it? It's between 70 and 80 years. Amen? So if you take 70 years in 1948, what does it bring you? 2018. Think about it. Now, we don't know it exactly the day and time, do we? But he said this generation, see the fig tree is associated with Israel becoming a nation. So when you see the fig tree, Israel becomes a nation. 1948, all Jews are going home. Amen? 1948, in this generation, approximately 70 years. We're looking at 2018. Or it could be 2028. Or it could be in between. But we see the things that are happening already that, it's, that is fulfilling prophecy. We're seeing this country turn such wicked that we've never seen it happen like this before. It's turning away from God. We're seeing a house divided. There's been, never been so much division in this country. This country is Satan, will become Satan's main headquarter. It will be the global headquarters of Satan's kingdom. That's why there's so many underground tunnels here. People have no idea what's going on. Colorado our Airport is one of the major locations underground. Of course, what do you see out there? The white horse with its... People have no idea that when the president was inaugurated in, in that the whole ceremony was the ceremony of Zeus. It was all representation of Zeus because they believe that they are the elite just like the fallen angels. They were the elite. They were the gods and goddesses. That's why you have all of this. They are still here. They are still operating. That kingdom of Satan is associated with fallen angels, hybrids, demons. Humans have sold their souls out for fame and fortune. And this is their reward. But we're not interested in a temporary realm or a temporary life. We live an eternal life. We've already started eternity unless you choose to turn. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Again, 32, Assuredly, I say to you, this generation by no means pass away until all things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with what? Carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. And that day come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy. Worthy. That you may be counted as a worthy warrior to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man or God. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that this seed of reality take place and dominion in our whole being, opening eyes, opening ears, opening hearts, willing to let go of life that we may Receive life and bring you all glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed.